Hello everybody, how are you? Welcome back. Now, today uh, is horrible, absolutely horrible. I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but it's absolutely howling wind outside and it's raining. So obviously no bash footage to be recorded today, nor can I lacquer the uh, hang long truck parts before they need to be reassembled. So it's tell me a time. Now, the last time I was working on the TL01, uh, we got to completing the, I think this is the rear, yes it is the rear hubs and links. So that's all done. So we're obviously moving on to the front, which is stage 18. So we might as well just get straight on it. Part 18, uh, we need two bearings, obviously again, these are using the, uh, the bushings, plastic bushings, we're using the bearings. Four MB1s, that's these stubby step screws, and two axles. Now, uh, do, 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 that's fine, okay. The axles are here. There's one. I like the axles on this car. There's things I like and things I don't like about this Tamiya, but the axles are really nice, a really nice finish. Feel nice and strong as well. So that's the two axles. Nothing else in here that I need right away. Right, part number B1 and B9. For the hubs here, uh, this is the C tree. So there's two B trees and one C tree, and I picked up the one that's wrong. So, right, here we are. B1s and B9s. These are, well, it could be six, but I think it's nine. It is. B9s are there, and I don't think I need this one at all. No, these are the hubs. Everything's on this one. Okay, as always there will probably be burrs on these plastic parts. Uh, no, that one's alright. That one could use a little trim. Uh, that one's okay. Again, this one could use a little trim. Right. So it's these parts, we still need the two bearings and the step screws. Now, bearings are here. Almost out of bearings. One, two. There they are. Oh, that one's on the, on the runaway. And uh, I don't know where these stubby little step screws are. So we'll have to go. There's a lot of stuff loose in here now. I've just sort of opened the bag. Aha! Darn. Okay, but I still find them. One, two, three, four. I believe these are the culprits right here. That's the ones. Right, so again, I've said this before, I am not putting oil there. So, uh, or, or grease rather, that's what they need to use to use grease. So, what's first here? Put the bearing in the back of the hub. Like so. So I get a finger in there. Push that down. Is that in? Eh, not fully, no. But I think this will push it in anyway. Further. Put the axle in. Can I get in there? Have I pushed it in? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. That's what we need. Right. And uh, da, 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 da. Wait a second. I think I've made a mistake. Have I made a mistake? I've made a mistake, folks. I've made a mistake. I just I saw hubs and I immediately jumped on it, but these aren't the parts I need yet. I need uh, B ones, which I weren't. I wasn't really looking, to be honest. I do that sort of thing a lot. Uh, this is. Ah, go away, C tree. Honestly, like right, this one. It's gonna be one of them. Ah, here we go. 
Good start, mate. Good start. To be fair, right, to be fair, I had quite a lot of whiskey last night. So, that's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Okay. Now we've got the correct parts. Now these are symmetrical, aren't they? They're absolutely identical. Are they? Uh, they're not identical top to bottom, so you need to have them upright. So that's the right way there. You can see the picture. That's that way. That's this way. Um, so there's no bearing or anything or or top hat or whatever. Any sort of sleeve that goes in there. This just screws straight down, does it? I think... I'm guessing it won't be threaded. Yeah, it's not threaded. To thread it yourself. That's alright. Just gonna push the screw to the there. We'll do it too tight. Just tight enough. Okay. Can I get can I get away with a little bit more? Just because I don't like slop. I know this this car is all about the slop, the slop and everything, slopping the steering, slopping the suspension, slopping the wishbones. But um, I'm trying to eliminate as much as I can. It's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, it's quite bad. But it's not bad for this car, is what I'm trying to say. Right, that's the first one done. Just need to mimic it on the other side. Again, bearing in the back there. Slightly too small to get your pinky in properly. Use the axle again. Yeah. Don't think that's in. Don't think so. There we go, that's the one. And again, we have it like so, like that, and like, yep, that. That's how it gets put together, okay. In my state of my hands, by the way, see that? Rachel's got a rather excitable little puppy who's all claws. And that one's <laughs> slipped and stabbed myself with a screwdriver. That was slightly different. Okay, part 18 complete. Got nice little hub assemblies. Nice. Part 19 get drive shafts, screw pins, and two more step screws. Now, the drive shafts I saw a minute ago. I still don't know why we've got these daft uh, springs. That's one of the springs, go away. These daft little plastic bits that you need to trim off yourself. I mean, why? Why? Why, Tamiya? Why? It's weird. Those ones. Is that one in there? Yes it is. Which, where's the other one? As I say, it's all loose in the box now. And these are the, ooh, I hit the camera, sorry. Those are the correct ones. And I just need that other long screw where it has run away to. Aha! Miraculously, this one's still in the bag. Is that the same? Yes, it is. Okay, that's us. That's everything we need. First things first, trim off these daft plastic bits. These really are daft. I mean, what's... Yeah. Anyway, never mind. Nice, 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 nice. Get rid of these plastic bits. Put them out of the way. See, they're all camouflaged against the area. 
Okay. Two drive shafts. Two of them. Two of them. Lovely. What shall we do first? I think I'll do the the bottom pins first. So basically, there. No. There. Through there. And it just screws into this. This end's threaded. No, this end's not threaded. This end's threaded. <laughs> this end's threaded there, as you can see. So it doesn't thread into that side as I thought. It threads into the front of it. So like that. This might fight me a little bit, but that's okay. There we go. That's through. We just need to tighten that up now. Moving the instructions around. I'm trying to keep it. I'm trying mindful that I've got to be to the left of. Well, as you're looking at it, to the right. But my, my left on this camera to stay under this one. I'm trying to make it work. You see, it's for your benefit. It's all for your guys' benefit. Makes it more difficult for me. Because of course, I appreciate you guys. I do appreciate everybody that comes and watches my videos. I know it's there's not that many who've I've, I've noticed that the, the Tamiya videos I've been doing. There's not a huge amount of people that are watching them, but I do appreciate each and every one of you who comes on the channel and watches the videos and everything subscribes. So thanks very much for that. You guys are the reason I do this of course. I enjoy doing it, but it, I, could, I enjoy buildings. I could be building all this without the cameras and now but well, it's all for you guys because I, I like to interact with everybody and you hear your comments and your feedback and that is good. Ah, hold on. Here we go. Here's that other thing. Remember I fitted the uh, GPM parts? So if you're looking at this camera, it's that there, the GPM parts. So again, that won't fit through because I need to use whatever screws that GPM. See, that won't fit through there. Whatever parts that GPM supplied, uh, which explains why there's still so many of these left. I keep forgetting that. However, uh, if you've seen one of the previous videos, you know that some of the GPM stuff isn't ideal because there are bits missing and blah, 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 blah. So I, I think these are the right bits here. These are definitely GPM parts because I can tell because they're hex fitting rather than Phillips screws. Now, would this be long enough to fit through there? Yes, but it'll only screw halfway through that hub there. So I wonder if there's a slightly longer one that the GPM has supplied. No, that's the same. Uh, I don't see any more GPM parts here. That's Tammy, isn't it? Yeah. Any more GPM bits? Yeah, there's two more, but these are, are they in short? No, they're the same. So I've got four, but they're all the same. And I think that's the only GPM screws I've got left. And if that's the case, it's got to be them. Yeah. Okay, so it's got to be them. So what I have to do is put that through, uh, through there, and it'll only screw to the sort of halfway point there. Uh, maybe a little bit more than halfway, but that's okay. That's fine. So I'll use them. Fine. Ah, that means I think my Phillips, not my Phillips, my Allen keys out. And what size was it again? Was it the blue one? I think it was the blue one. It was the blue one, right? Well remembered. Okay. And in there. Now, I don't know if anybody has watched the sort of this build series I'm doing one after the other in quick succession. I'm not sure. But if you did, you're probably shouting at the screen at that point going, uh, No, Mike, you don't use those screws. You use the GPM. You keep bloody forgetting. Well, I do because there's several weeks in between doing these. You know, but obviously if you're watching it, it'll just be several minutes. There we are. Fine. You can get lost. All right, and this one. <laughs> I made another mistake, haven't I? Let's back this up a little bit. Made another mistake there. That's what I've forgotten to do. 
Did anybody notice? Yeah, the drive shaft kind of has to be in, kind of a little bit. Did anybody notice that? I didn't. What an idiot. What an idiot. Get in there. Thank you. Again, I'm blaming the whiskey. I'm not fully recovered yet. I mean, all no apologies. I like scotch. Proper scotch whiskey. Oops. It was Jura, by the way, in case anybody. That's quite quite a cheap brand, but I quite like it. Jura Superstition. In case you were wondering. There we are. Yep, fine. And the same on the other side. Alrighty then, that's that done. Incidentally, I just remembered what these are for. Remember, uh, I bought the optional uh, two degree toe in rear hubs. So these are the standard zero degree toe in straight ahead hubs, which is why they're spare. But that's the front uprights all nice and finished. Doesn't seem to have a huge range of steering on this car. But I think that's the least of its handling problems, to be honest. I should stop being so down on this, actually. You know what I mean? I keep saying, oh, it's got a load of slop and oh, this is this and this is that, but. It is a budget, well, I was going to say it is budget. It's not that budget to me, but it was budget when it came out. Nice and creative, Tamiya. It's just not fantastic. It's not a race machine. But, having said that, I have a lot of good memories from my original TL01 with the Alfa Romeo 155 shell. So, you know, I've got nothing but good good memories of this thing, good, good opinion. It's just that, yes, there is a lot of inadequacies that show up compared to if, you, if you're used to high-end kit, that's all. But that's fine, that's fine, that's all I expected. Now, tie rod, you're supposed to use the uh, the uh, step screws again, but obviously we're not going to do that. That's, that's interesting, so that goes above. See there on the instructions. If the car's upside down, they've actually got to stretch that side of it, not that side of it. See what I mean? So that's above. As well, it's underneath because the car's upside down, but above as we're looking at it, but that's fine. Okay, so um, again, I'll, this will this must be the last of the GPM screws because I think I've only got the two left. Pretty sure that's all I've got. Pretty sure also that they've run away again, they seem to have disappeared off the face of the map. There's one, there's another one. Okay. So we're getting back to the blue Allen key. Allen, oh, Allen key, yeah. Yeah. and in there. I do like this GPM kit. I was just annoyed that what was it? There was some bits missing. If I remember correctly, there was the top hats or something. The space was missing two of, and there was also the fact that on uh, this part here. Uh, the included uh, nuts are too wide. See that? Just the included one, this black one. You can see the other ones um, there. If you can, if the camera will pick it up in there and there. But I had to use a slim silver one that I got from my dad's workshop because I built this car uh, to the stages where at my parents' house. Uh, because the, the the big one, the black one's too big for that gap there because of this this piece of the chassis. So there was no space. But that was the ones that were included. So I've got one left over. It seems odd. Because I'm, I'm sure there'd be quite a considerable amount of R and D in the um, in GPM, and they've missed that part completely. They've missed that point. But never mind. It's nothing that can't be overcome. With a bit of uh, scrounging around, finding a right part, and anybody who's into this sort of RC hobby should be able to find a replacement pretty easily. So that's fine. There we are. Okay. Now, that's step 20 completed. It should be onto this one here. However, I suppose it's a shock absorber. However, um, you notice that they haven't said to put the bearings in yet, there yet, but the bearings will go in there and I've put them here. So I might as well pop the bearings in just now and that's the bearings completed. Two bearings. 
very snug, very snug fit, which is good. There we go, and the other side. Lovely. Don't think that's quite in yet. It's not flush. It's hard to hard to push in though. Right. All right. I think. Ah. I'm just not quite sure. That's there. We go. That's it. Right. Lovely. Now this part, part twenty one. You put that to this side. Is all about the shock absorbers. Well, I say shock absorbers. They're not really dampers because they're not oil filled. You see, these are plastic friction shocks. But I'm not using those. So you've got, for example, the use the spring. Here's one of the springs. Very soft. That's the included one. But I'm not using those because uh, one of the handling deficiencies of this car were purely down to the the dampers. A lack of lack of real dampers. So I got these Ansman racing ones, I got them on eBay, they never actually said Ansman, they were just generic, and they're actually a different colour on the picture, but I don't care, Ansman, I, I mean, obviously Ansman aren't, they don't exist anymore, uh, Team C bought over most of their stuff, but Ansman, Ansman made good stuff. Um, so here we are, uh, I'm planning on using the thicker, stronger red uh, springs, uh, the stiffer red springs, but that all depends on how stiff the black and red springs actually are, I've not opened this yet as you can see. So it could be that the black ones are perfectly stiff already. I don't have some scissors on me right now. Right, okay, let's have a look at these. I said they're not that stiff. Which means these black ones will be... They feel stiffer actually, but in the description it said that the red ones are the stiffer ones, but... They don't look any stiffer, or any any thicker anyway. Let me let me just check. Very little on it, to be honest. I think the red ones are marginally stiffer, and they're the ones I'm going to use. Now, here's the thing. Although these are quite nice with the threaded shock collars and anyway. threaded shock bodies, uh, adjustable collars, and is that? It's aluminium, it's actually metal. Is it metal shock caps? It's hard to tell, it's cold. You know what I mean? If you, if you get what I'm saying, but. Oh, I just don't know if that's metal or plastic, these shock caps. Either way, it feels quite, quite nice, but. If anybody's bought some uh, budget, you know, oil filled trucks before, they're usually <laughs> near as damn it empty. Also, I don't know the thickness of the uh, oil at all, so it could be anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them all apart and fill them all. Now the car, I'm not planning on using it outside at all, because this car is a bit of a collector's piece and it's going up in value. And it's nice to have on display, and I don't really want to scratch it and everything underneath, you know, running along this road, get stones scratching it, etc. I'll run it indoors, um, you know, on carpet or whatever. So it will only ever be driven on a high traction surface, a very high traction surface, which is why I want to go for the stiffer springs. And as a result, I need to use slightly stiffer shock oil. So I might usually use about 30 weight or something in a touring car. But for this one, I'm going to use 45, oh, hit the camera again. It's all good, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, it's all fine. Yeah, 45 weight. We we'll use 45 weight oil and, uh, you know, that's, that's cool, no problem. So what I'm going to do now is just, off camera, crack on, because there's, not, there's nothing exciting about watching someone fill shocks. Just crack on, fill these shocks up and we'll start again in a little while. Right, so that's me done two of them. I've put 45 weight oil in each. Uh, I can confirm that these shock caps are actually aluminium, metal shock caps. That's not bad for, I think I paid 16 or 17 pounds or something for the set of four. 
Um, so that's pretty good. The shock's extremely stiff. I'm trying to compress them here, see. Um, it's not the springs, it's the seals against the shock shaft need to be worked back and forward a little bit before they loosen off. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Um, because even when there was no oil in it, and no spring on it, they were super stiff. So they should slacken off with use, so that'd be fine. Still got two to do, um, but I'll need to do them later on. Uh, basically, Jackie phoned, my mum phoned, Matthew phoned, uh, apparently some plans, meeting up for lunch or, or, or driving to Dundee and blah blah blah, lots of stuff to, to do. Um, so I'll need to pick this up later on, hopefully I'll be able to do this tonight, later on tonight, or maybe tomorrow, I hope to get it done tonight, and we will see, so we'll pick this up later on. So we'll cut. For those of you who didn't know us, it is the next day. Um, yeah, I was out too late last night to come back and do more filming. So where did I get to? I did. I did finish all four shocks, which are here. Um, like I said earlier, they're a bit uh, stiff. I haven't set the. I haven't set the uh, collar height yet. Or oh, do that once they're on the car and the wheels are on it, etc. Yeah, they're quite well well made. They look quite nice. Quite nice indeed. So, the included screws are here, I'm hoping, there's eight of them of course, I'm hoping that Ansman have um, tailored these screws to be the right size for, for Tammy a car, because if you see here, if you read that it says uh, aluminium oil damper for Tammy a TATB or TL chassis, so it's obviously made for Tammy, unless it's just them going, oh, if we put the word Tammy on the back of it, people will find it while Googling. But I'm hoping these are the right size of screws for a Tamiya chassis, we'll find out. Again they are Phillips. Is it the blue one? Um, yes, it's the blue one. Get this on the camera. Yeah, they're the right size. Nice one. Nice one. Good, good, good. And you can see here on the instructions that the uh, the bottom of it goes on to this one here. I don't know what that one there is for, but uh, this one here. Is it the same size as the bottom? It should be. Yeah, that's the same. That is the same. Hope they're, uh, hope they're not going to foul the chassis there, they're a bit close, I'll show you on the camera. Is that in? Yeah, it's in. Look at the camera here. The shot collar is very close to the, the body of the chassis there. Showing that camera there, like, it's quite close, so... No, it, mo it moves fine, it moves fine. Lovely and progressive. So, just a few more of those, I suppose. There we are then. They fit perfectly and they look really good. And there's no furling. They're close, but there's no furling, so that's perfect. Dead chuff with them. Nice. Okay, what's next? Must be getting towards the end now. I'm assuming... Ah, there is. Right, okay. In fact, it's this part now. It's going to say, I'm assuming that the front bumper or some sort of front arrangement squeezes these uh, two plates, remember the chassis is two long plates squeeze them together because there's a gap here um, and not so much at the back but there is definitely a, a gap there in the front, a slit with a join and um, it's not sealed and I know there's a lot of grease and mechanicals in there so I was hoping something sealed it properly we might find out because what we need now is the front bumper C19 in fact Oh wow, look, that's the rear one. They're, they're, they're identical. Front and rear are identical. So front and rear are both C19. And we need the same MA4 screws. So we need uh, 12 of them in total. Um, and that includes the body posts as well. MB7 and MB7. So they're the same front and rear for everything, basically. Bumpers, screws, and body posts. Righto, I have 
my four MB7 body clips, I have my 12 MA4 screws. On the closer inspection, C8 is the rear posts, and C5, C5 are the two front ones, so they're smaller. And these are identical, these are the C19 bumpers. Now I'm going to put the bumper on first. Now uh, obviously you can see here it says rear first and then front. It makes absolutely no difference, you do it whatever order you want, because it's all one stage after all, and there's not exactly anything that gets bolted onto them etc that you need to take into consideration. So I'm just going to do the front one first since it's what's facing me right now. And it's four screws in each bumper. In fact, what I think I'll do is I'll do the bumpers first rather than the front first or the back first. I think I'll do the bumpers first. Because that way, I've done this one, and you've seen how it goes on. And then, there we are. I can just whoosh, cut and do the other one off camera, essentially. Bumpers on. Yeah, this is really starting to take shape now. It's all coming back to me now, looking at the chassis. Yeah. It's all coming back to me. It's starting to really to look like the one I used to own. Of course, I didn't have all these hop-ups on my first one. I didn't have the GPM parts or these oil foil shocks or whatever. I don't know if we ended up getting oil foil shocks at all, actually. Let me net that up again. I don't know if we ever had oil foil shocks. I don't think we ever did upgrade it. We definitely put uh, an electronic speed controller in it, but that's about it, I think. Right, C8 are the, the longer ones, which are for the rear, so that's, and then they're facing towards the back of the car, so that would be this way, oh, that's C5, that's, ooh, that's fouling those shocks, you can see there, this is the rear of the car, so that's facing away from the car. That looks to be, no actually that one, that one, well maybe not, it's very close. It's actually very close to filing the shock towers. Very close to filing the shock towers, but apparently it does clear, just. They obviously splay out a little bit like that. Does that splay out? Hard to tell. Compared to the shock towers they splay out because they're not parallel to each other. Oh well. Tell me you know what they're doing. Well not to question them. They don't become the world's biggest and most famous RC manufacturer by accident, so they know what they're doing. Even with the chassis is mad and unconventional as this one. Although I haven't said that, this is nowhere near as mad and unconventional as, say, for example, the lunchbox and um, pumpkin chassis, or the hornet and grasshopper chassis, for example, with their daft gearboxes and stuff. They're very unconventional. Nice pliable plastic, look at that. But, wow, very pliable. I like that. It reminds me of HPI actually, that's a good thing. I've not been a, the biggest fan of HPI's product lineup for a while now, to be honest with you. But I won't hear anybody say anything bad about HPI plastics because the quality of the plastics is excellent. One of the best. Yep. I mean, I really liked the HBI jump shot until I got to the gearbox, which was an utter letdown. If you've seen some of my very first videos when I got the first HBI jump shot in the UK, the week it came out, actually the days, it, the first couple of days it came out, I certainly got the first HBI jump shot brushless in the whole world, and I was kind of the test guinea pig for HPI because they had never put brushless in it before and it just didn't even last one lipo, one battery pack. Right, there we are.
I like it. I like it a lot. I like these plastics. They're, they're excellent. They're really good. Now it says here, you put this, the body clips through one, two, three, four, five, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth hole down on the rear. I always put, I, for some reason, I always, as out of habit, I always put my body clips in from the, the inside out if I can. I think it's probably me being picky during my racing days trying to get every tiny little gram of weight as central as possible. So, one, two, three, four, five. Not that it's going to make any difference on this. Not that it made any difference to the race car anyway, but it uh, made me feel better. One, two, three, four, five. A lot of this stuff. I mean, I've. I mean, okay, having the, the the best stuff and the best equipment and getting your chassis set up and everything really good for racing, was, you know, that's all very well and good and it makes a massive difference having your car set up properly. But there was a lot of stuff that's sort of psychological as well. It'd give you a psychological boost even if it makes no difference whatsoever to your performance. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, Michael Schumacher, bless him. He, um... He was superstitious as hell. He had sort of, you know, he would always get into the car from the left foot first and all the rest of it. He was quite superstitious at that and he never had uh, even numbers on the car. He always had odd numbers on the car. But you know, it worked for him. I think he had the talent to do it anyway, but you know, it was all up here. Right. Okay. Now the, the wheels and tyres already are already put together, I don't know if they're glued, but it's fine at the moment, this is just going to be a, a, a display model for the moment, because um, they were they were on display in whatever shop this came from, but they were lifted off ground, so they weren't weight bearing. I don't think they're glued, no they're not glued. That's fine, I can glue them at a later time when I'm going to use the car, because I'm not going to use it for a while, I'm just going to have it on display with that disappointingly badly made, badly spray painted body shell, which will let it down. There's no foams in these. Is there supposed to be foams in these? Uh, no, there's no foams. Okay, there's no foam, so we can skip that part completely. What we need to do is put the uh, hexes on with the hex pins through the axle and then the wheels and tires on it. Fine. So we need the hexes, which are on this piece. Are we going to use the C piece for once? Oh, it's a B piece as well. Oh, jeez, I don't know. Okay, so here's the hexes. One, two, three, uh, uh, four. And the pins. I'm just going to spin the, there we go, spin the diff so these are horizontal as possible, although they're, they're not completely. 90 degrees or 180 degrees to each other because you can pull these axles out and spin them and put them back in again. But that's fine. Go. Yeah, it's in there. That's the back one's on. No, that's the front one's on. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's so weird looking. Just need to look at where the motor is and you're like, ah, and, or the servo. That's like the only hint you get. It's, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying. Drat. Where are they? Are they, they uh, yes they are. The wheel nuts, they are here. One, two, three. Well at least three of them are here. There's the fourth. More wheel nuts. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just putting a wheel on lifts the entire look of the thing, doesn't it? Doesn't it look so much better just with having a wheel on? You go, oh, all of a sudden, yes, it looks like a touring car. Before that, it just looked like some weird block. 
Now, look at that. What, what a difference. I'm smiling because it's really bringing me back now. It wasn't just the TL01 chassis I had, it was this exact one, the Tamiya TL01 Alfa Romeo 155 Bosch. Um, yeah, I'll just do these two first, I think. Now, I do have my own toolkit, but I might as well use the included wheel nut spanner, which is here. tell when it's fully tightened up because the amount of slop in this. There's a lot of slop in this chassis, look at that. A lot of movement. Still. Lovely smooth diffs. Obviously, I've just built them. Of course, of course they are, but well greased up. <laughs> so they're so nice. They feel really good actually. The diffs I like. I like. I, remember I said this when I was building. The diffs are, are lovely. The way they're. Um, I don't like the way they're floating a little bit. You know, like the, the axle goes in and it's, it's not kind of floating around in there. But the tolerances are quite fine there, so it doesn't move around too much. Um, so it won't be a problem. But the the diffs are nice because everything's oversized. All the teeth are big. The gears are big. Um, they're nylon uh, rather than metal, but, um, but there's plenty of uh, surface area. There's you know you're never going to put far too much. I mean I, I I can't even even if you put a really high powered brushless system in one of these, which I, I wouldn't, but because uh, you over overwhelm the chassis and overwhelm the handling straight away. Um, you can change the track width just by moving that back and forward. <laughs> Look, wide ways. Narrow, why do not? Anyway, um, but I still think the gearbox and everything could take it. The drivetrain could take it. I mean, it's got a stainless steel drive shaft, doesn't it? The TT01 has a plastic drive shaft. I think the TT02 has a plastic one as well. Slightly better plastic one, but it's plastic nonetheless. The TT01 drive shaft is the center shaft. Is absolutely. I don't mean the, the drive shaft here and the, the axles, but the center one is absolutely useless. It's completely crap. So that's one of the first upgrades you get in the TT01. There we are. Look at that. The chassis is complete. Finally. What do you think? I'm really quite pleased with it. I like it. Yeah, it's either quite a lot of chassis friction because I put far too much grease in it, or that uh, brush motor has some quite pretty strong magnets in it, or both. It'll, wear, it'll uh, even off though, it will wear off. It'll slacken off a little bit. I like it a lot. That really, yeah, that's cool. That is cool. Um, there's very little left to do, obviously. You could you know, put the electronics in it and start it up and test it and everything. The last thing I'll do today is just simply put the uh, side panels on it for the, uh, which are here. C10 and the MB8 screws. Oh, wait, wait, what's the screw for? MB8 clips is what I mean. What's the screw for? Oh, that screw is for the aerial tube, the aerial mount. But we won't be using the aerial mount because I'm using a 2.4 gigahertz system and I've got a very short aerial. Um, I mean, if I put it in and the aerial is stick it up a little bit, then I maybe I'll use that, which is there. You see it in the camera. I don't know if you can see it. But right there. But um, which, where does that mount anyway? Uh, uh, uh. Oh, so you take that screw out. Take you back this screw back out again, this one here. And then you put it in, screw it back. But I won't be bothering with that because, like I said, um, we probably won't need that. Probably won't need it at all. So, let's just get the big body clips. And, well, there's the... What do they call these anyway? I was going to say the stops for the battery. What, what do they actually call these? Doesn't look like they give them a name. It just says C10. Doesn't really give them a name. 
Apparently stopped, they're as good a name as any. The final touches for today, putting the battery stops. Racer. If it can fit. Yes it can. Another thing I used to have with my, I don't know if I mentioned this before in an earlier video with my TLO one, when I had the mechanical speed controller, I kept on getting runaways. I couldn't understand it because I was a stupid kid and I couldn't work out these things. It was so obvious when you think about it. Um, come on, get in. There we go. Ha ha! Yeah, that looks cool. That looks really cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, I was getting runaways because you mounted the on-off switch somewhere. Um, it told you where to mount it on an earlier page. So I can find it for you. Obviously, this one doesn't have a mechanical speed controller. I'm using an electronic one, an ESC there. Actually, this 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 says it's got a, an electronic one anyway, but uh, this may be a later kit than my original one then, because my original one had the mechanical wiper arm speed controller. It says there with the on-off switch would be uh, double sided tape just in front of the motor right there or something but the thing is Tammy I recommend you can see oh, I don't even turn that do I you can see here if you look there they suggest that on is forward towards the front of the chassis and off is backwards so it's running along and then with a mechanical wiper arm speed controller if, if you turn an, an ESC off an electronic speed controller off the car will stop because the electronic speed controller is getting no more power but if you turn mechanical speed controller off it just stays in the position it was sitting at at the time because it's operated by a servo so if the servo's got it on full throttle you switch it off it stays on full throttle because the battery's still connecting the circuit that is still connecting the circuit to the battery so you're still getting full power you just have these mad full speed runaways where i had no steering in it and i couldn't work out what it was and that's exactly what it was the switch was getting switched off by the stones in the road and the car was taking off at full pelt no wonder my body shell was ruined but anyway there we are i think it looks fan fantastic next time just a, a much quicker video next time, just we'll, we'll get it all wired up and everything and we'll give it a wee, sort of, I, I'm not going to test it outside or anything, we'll get a wee test, make sure it works, and I hope you guys will be there to see it. I'm certainly looking forward to it. Right, thank you very much for watching, take care of yourselves, we'll see you as soon as possible. Cheers!